Yeah, you know, okay. Question. All right. Uh, yeah, I couldn't. I didn't know which one he was talking to. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I guess just as far as what you got out of the, out of the last meet, do you feel it prepares you for this one? And, and uh, I assume the competition gets a whole lot tougher. Yes. For, uh, either, either way. Yeah. So, for for example, this meet this weekend, you're absolutely right, Nate. It it ramps up quite a bit. Um, uh, first of all, we were glad to be able to help the other in-state schools um, that came up. It was um, good that the, good ha to have those schools here. Uh, it certainly ramps up this weekend with LSU, Old Miss, Texas, Missouri, Oklahoma State, USC, and Kentucky. So it's going to be a it's going to be a really good track meet. Looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I think obviously uh, having that first meet out of the way, um, you know, some, a little bit of soreness and a little bit of dings here and there, but for the most part came out unscathed. And that was, that was our main goal. If you can remember last week. And yeah, so we're, we're just um, take another step forward, hopefully this weekend and get a little bit better. Too early for NCAA qualifiers, or are you looking to get some this week? No, it's not too early. In fact, you know, I think we had a couple even last weekend. You know, you did, you don't know how things will pan out uh, uh, overall uh, with the NCAA meet. Am I right on this, Lance? Because number one, you don't know how many, how, what percentage of schools will be participating, and that might, you know, the maximum field size, Nate, has always been 16. Uh, but with, with conferences opting out, you know, that field size might drop to 14 or it might drop to 13 or 12. So we really don't know how this thing is going to pan out, but we just felt like, hey, we've, you know, we got a couple of good performances in uh, that we feel, you know, we'll have a shot at making it in even after the first meet. So let me give somebody else a shot. Yeah. Uh, Bob, well, they, do you have a question? Yeah, I guess maybe Lance could take take that. What Chris was just talking about, how how last week went, and then um, obviously step it up in class, so to speak, and, and and you know facing SEC teams especially. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think that uh, like Chris was saying, I, we were really pleased how we got through the uh, initial competition uh, this last Saturday. Uh, we had some really really good performances, some great opening performances. I think the kids were super excited about the opportunity to get a race in after a, a 10 month layoff. Uh, but this week, if you're something of uh, holistic in nature, um, the sprints are loaded. I mean, when you bring University of Southern California, LSU, Kentucky, um, you know, with ourselves, uh, you're talking about some of the best sprint teams in the United States. So. Um, our, our ballistic events are going to be simply outstanding and uh, we'll definitely have our hands full. Uh, the distances, uh, some of them will be set up to be really, really fast for us and um, we'll look forward to that challenge. But, uh, you know, each week it's kind of like going up a stairwell. Every week the competition gets keener uh, in obviously in anticipation of uh, Razorback and Tyson being our headliners, and then ultimately the SEC meet, and then springboard that to nationals. Nationals are going to be a real question mark because, again, like Chris was saying, uh, there are some people that are opting out. There are some people that are sponsoring both indoor and cross country and are focused more on the distances and uh, preparation for cross country. Will that dilute some of the events? Um, all that remains to be seen, but when we compared the marks this last weekend across the nation, uh, we had a very successful weekend. And then you had the uh, Jayla Hollis, the SEC freshman of the week. Yes. What, 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 what would you say about her as a newcomer and what your expectations are for her? I know her? that when Chris uh, went after her, she was the athlete. She was the target of every sprint power in the United States. and we were able to convince her to, to come to Arkansas and, and we're blessed doing so because she's 
She's an outstanding hurdler as well as a great sprinter. Um, and she's kind of mature beyond her years as a competitor. Uh, she fears no one um, and raced uh, like that this last weekend. The competition this weekend will definitely step up two or three notches and uh, we'll see how she handles some of the best there is in the U.S. And then Chris, your, your guy, uh, Jonathan Baker, you know, I think he went over just over 25 feet, if I remember correctly. Yeah. What did you think about him? Is he going to be jumping this weekend or Friday? Uh, um, he will um, be long jumping um, again uh, this weekend. Uh, you know, he also triple jumps as well. But I think I think Mario is uh, Coach Satania is kind of holding him off on that uh, you know, for a little bit more fitness gains before we triple jump him. But he'll he'll go ahead and jump again. I think the thing that was impressed. I was impressed with Jonathan was the fact that, Hey, he took six jumps. Um, his best jump, I think was his last one. Um, and he had another one that was, I think, uh, you know, from what we could tell, maybe a, a high 25 foot jump close to 26 feet and he scratched on it, but, uh, he put it out there pretty good. Um, so Jonathan, and again, much like Lance's athlete, um, um, you know, he jumped 26 two in high school. I mean, he, he got a, he got a meet in, um, in Texas before everything shut down. And as you know, in, in Texas, they'll, they'll have some track meets in, in February. And that's when he, he had a, he had a big, uh, a big jump, uh, then. And so, uh, you know, outstanding athlete, out, outstanding jumper. And, you know, he's going to just keep getting better, um, you know, he needs to do more sprinting. He needs to run better and sprint better. Um, uh, you know, hopefully maybe, you know, we'll see him doing some more sprinting outdoors, but um, just a, is a, he's a great talent and he's a dual threat. You know, he will triple jump at some point too. So uh, outstanding athlete, and very pleased with his opening mark. First, and actually the first time he's ever done anything indoors. He's never been on an indoor, he's never competed at an indoor track never competed on an elevated runway like we have and was able to, um, to do that. So a lot of, a lot of positives for Jonathan, excited about him. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it back, back to Sean. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Eric, do you have any questions? Uh, I do. Thanks, Sean. Uh, one, uh, one for each coach, if you don't mind, Chris, I'll, I'll go right back to, uh, to you. Uh, obviously, uh, and kind of pivoting off, uh, off John, he gets to go against, Jamari Ward uh, uh, this week, which obviously is you know going to be a great test for him. You know, kind of a simulation of what it'll be like at SECs and nationals. And then obviously, you know, like I look at you know, I mean, as much as Lance talked about, and Lance, I definitely want to ask you about all those ballistic events. But Chris, I mean, like you have a uh, a men's high jump competition, you know, that, uh, that's going to have you know Sears from SC, Vilches from Missouri, Miner from uh, Kentucky, Harrison uh, uh, from LSU. I mean, like, I mean, like the. the this is a, this is, I mean, that's why they call it track and field. I mean, this is, yeah. this is, this is going to, this is going to be, uh, you know, quite a show uh, this early in the year that I would say I'd put it on par with even what's going to happen in that, in that arena on Sunday. Um, how much does that, how much does that pump you up to be, uh, you know, to, to be able to see those kids have the opportunity to go head to head with some of the, some of the best in the country right away? It's, it's, you know, it's what our facility is all about and, um, you know, excited. Um, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, one of the things that makes our facility good is that is that it's world class, uh, both on the Volvo and for the jumps in the field events. And so, um, yeah, that's going to be a tremendous, um, a tremendous competition. And you bring the national leader in from LSU in a long jump, yep. who's already jumped 26 too, and it's it's um, um, you know a national champion. So it's uh, like Lance said, it's gonna it's gonna be a great ballistic event, but. Um, uh, for us, because you're going to see some great sprinting, some great hurdling. You bring some of the best hurdlers in the country with LSU and the hurdlers. And, uh, um, and so it's, it's on the men's side as well. It's going to be a ballistic event, but don't count out the mile, uh, which um, I think maybe has a shot at going on to four minutes. And, um, uh, you know, that's going to be a good race and there'll be some, a, a good 3000 too. And, and, and some good 800. So it's across the board, it's going to be good. But like you said, the jump, the high jump is going to be outstanding. And, um, you know, look, looking forward to watching those, watching those cats jump. 
you know, the, the uh, already, um, you know, with the new surface, it feels, it feels a little bit different in there. It feels, feels good with the, with the renovations Absolutely. and the new Mondo. Yeah. Awesome. On the and, uh, and Lance, I mean, obviously, you t I, I, I just wanted to ask uh, Lance uh, specifically, you talked about the 60, you talked about, you know, the two, the four, the 60 hurdles. I want to talk about the four by four. I mean, <laughs> you guys in Kentucky being able to mix it up, uh, you know, uh, right away. I mean, I went back and did the research with that 334 last week. You're one of only five schools ever to run sub 335 in an opener uh, in NCAA history. So obviously that shows the caliber that those girls put out. And now if you get Kentucky coming with the A lineup that has, you know, Steiner and Holmes and that group on it, like, you know, I, I know there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of good stuff before we get to that point of the meet, but how excited are you for, uh, you know, if you put Paris and Morgan and Rosie and Shafiqa out there to run against that group? No, the, the Ma Relay might be one of the featured events of the entire meet. Uh, and right prior to that, the 3000, I think is going to be outstanding, but, uh, no, the four by four. We were looking at the the entries. Uh, there's going to be a team of all Americans that are going to be in the second section because we only run yes. four in the fast section. Somebody's going to, have yep. to uh, and they're going to be mad uh, that they're not all in the fast heat. But um, I mean, the likes of Texas and Kentucky and and SC and ourselves, um, you know, everybody is. Uh, is loaded in that event and it's going to be, it could be a preview of the final uh, at the national championship of uh, those same teams hitting head to head. So uh, we will definitely have our work cut out, but I know our kids are super excited. Uh, like you said, their opener was outstanding and, uh, you know, basically by themselves. And now we have an opportunity to kind of take the A group and B group and merge it together and make a, a very strong A team. And, you know, the same, anybody that wins one of these events in the ballistic events, they're going to have to knock off multiple All-Americans to be able to grab first place. So I know it's early in the season, but boy, it, it, there's going to be a slash, uh, a clash of titans this weekend when it comes to the ballistic events at Arkansas. Well, and, and I don't say this with any disrespect to what Paul's got lined up on Sunday, but Fair to say that some of the marks could be as good or better on Friday than they will be on Sunday with the way people are competing already. That's exactly right. Um, and again, I think it's a tribute to uh, our collegians that are finally getting back into the groove of getting an opportunity to compete and being deprived of that opportunity for 10, 11 months. Um, it just ups the ante that they're super excited. And in fact, some of the kids even talked about hey, we really need to take care of the opportunity now because what happens if I do get COVID and have to sit out the seven day? Um, you know, so timing is is really uh, critical when it comes to trying to put a season together this year. So Appreciate many you guys know. both. Thank you. You bet. Russell, do you have a question? Lance, I wanted to uh, ask you about Tina Wilson, just what a, kind of growth you've seen from her over the last couple of years and what kind of 2021 season she could have. Deanna is just a, a, such a great kid, kind of quiet, um, you know, uh, a hometown hero from, from uh, Eastern Arkansas. Um, came in, I don't think she said seven words in the entire season, um, but has really uh, evolved into being one of our major players uh, as far as our sprints go. And as uh, Chris has really done a fantastic job of developing her, her natural speed. And, uh, you know, we thought of her as a quarter miler. She's turning out to be a very good 60 and 200 meter runner, uh, which is exceptional considering as tall as she is. But, uh, you know, she is, she is a, a young lady that we're going to brag about for a long time that was, uh, you know, born and raised in Arkansas and uh, came to the university somewhat apprehensive, like, oh my gosh, this might be too big a city for me. And uh, she's just, um, she's absolutely exploded. Nate, did you have another question? Uh, one, I mean, uh, for both coaches, I don't, I'm sure it's kind of irrelevant, but are you going to score me? And also with the cross country, uh, 
Do either one of you have any athletes really strictly training for cross country nationals, or is everybody working indoors? Great, right, Chris. Uh, we're working indoors right now. Um, you know, we do find days to get out onto the cross country course, Nate, and get on some grass and do some things in that regard. It lines up well, but um, um, you know, you know, we're just trying to get our guys as fit as we can. Um, and run some great distance races. And, I, and I'm hoping that, um, you know, we'll carry over in March um, uh, to a good cross, you know, one good cross country race. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of the way we're looking at it. You won't have any like dual cross country meets or any prep meets, can you? As of, as of right now, no. Um, you know, there's, there's some tempting opportunities, but, um, you know, I, I don't want to be, and I could be wrong, and it's the first time I've ever done it, and I'm not saying I'm doing it right. I hope I am, you know, for the sake of our kids, but I don't want to be betwixt and in between. You know, what are we, cross country? What are we on, on are we on the track or whatever? And so we're, we're going solid on the track and, you know, thinking that, hey, in the past, uh, we have come off an indoor season and gone out to Stanford early March or late March, you know, not, not, two weeks after the indoor season. And we've had some guys run some great 10 Ks. And so um, we just feel like, Hey, we're just going to go ahead. And uh, we got some good cross country in, in the fall. And we're going to, we're going to support indoor track and support the rest of our team and, and um, uh, compete at home at the SEC. And hopefully we'll have some qualifiers at the national championship and then we'll go from there, you know, but um, that's what we're doing. Thanks. I guess Lance in question. Doing the same thing that, uh, that Chris is doing is that uh, the emphasis is always and the priority is always going to be indoor. Um, but some of our athletes are distinctly once a week staying outside uh, in one of their quality sessions uh, to, again, keep that cross country aspect going. And then the other one is, is on the track. And so uh, it's kind of the way we train normally because um, our indoor track, you know, after a while, it gets monotonous. So um, we're kind of staying to routine. And, and like Chris said, we've always had good fortune a week or two after the NCAA indoor meet to go open up outdoors and, and run some fantastic times. So hopefully that, uh, that formula continues to work for us and you know, we'll keep the doors open. And for those that are uh, capable, uh, we'll venture over to Stillwater for the excitement in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Also, just as a me going to be scored and, and are any fans allowed this weekend? Yeah, we're, we're scoring the, we're scoring the me. Yeah. And no fans. And no okay. fans. Thanks. It is streamed live, I guess, right? So. Correct. Yes, it will be streamed live. Uh, Jason, do you have a question? Yeah, I'll start with you, Lance. Just, you know, talking about the no fans, creating an atmosphere, especially with all the restrictions you guys have with your athletes, how how difficult is that in a track meet where you want to create an atmosphere? And then how did the meet go, learning experiences you got last week that you'll carry throughout the, the rest of the season? Um, well, I think our quarter milers and, and our uh, milers did a fantastic job of, of opening up and, and kind of establishing themselves in the ranks as well as our mile relay. Uh, but the idea of having no fans, um, as I was telling one of our administrators today, I think at the NCAA meet, because there's so much restriction that um, when they award the trophies or the trophy uh, out to the teams, uh, it's gonna be the sounds of silence because number one, your opposition's not gonna cheer for you because they just pack up and leave. And those that are there are going to grab their trophy and, uh, you know, cheer amongst themselves and celebrate as best they can. But um, it, it is it is very quiet. And uh, except for the athletes that are participating, um, it, it's, a, it's more like a, a track workout. You know, we're there in the building. We're, we're somewhat loud amongst each other as men's and women's team, but... Um, we definitely miss our fans. You take that too, Chris. Yeah, I mean, um, 
you know, we, um, we, we missed the fans. I, I was impressed with how our guys responded. Um, you know, without the fans, you can see there's a, you know, track has this ability to, you know, that intrinsic motivation, um, um, you know, and we got some, some great races, uh, you know, out of our guys and some great jumps. Uh, but, you know, obviously it was a little bit different. I can tell you from a procedural standpoint, um, you know, we have shifted uh, where the athletes from the teams would normally be in Fowler during, in the warm-up area. Uh, th there's no hanging around in Fowler. That is strictly um, pre-race um, uh, warm-ups. And, you know, the athletes are back out into the stadium um, at most of the time. So, for example, if you, unless you're warming up for an event, there's no hanging out uh, in Fowler watching on the big screen. You're in the, in, you're in the building. And that, that might be a, that actually gave us some more room to warm up, Jason, and it, it, it cleaned that area out a little bit. And I would say that that's going to be in the future what we'll end up doing. And that is, unless you're warming up uh, within, um, you know, an hour of the event, you know, you're going to be out into the stadium. So that itself created a little bit more atmosphere um, um, for us last weekend. Uh, and there'll be more teams this weekend. Uh, uh, there'll be a little bit higher energy level. And you'd be amazed, you know, these kids, they, they adapt. Uh, they figure it out. They adapt. And, and the highly motivated ones um, are, are enthusiastic about competing at the highest level. And they're going to find a way to run fast and, and do the thing and run hard and jump and do their thing. So, um, you know, I, I guess we'll feel it a little bit. Uh, we certainly feed off the energy at an SEC or an NCAA championship uh, where, you know, let's just say the women go one, two, three in a mile and then the men are up next. I mean, yeah, there's there's that level of, you know, um, excitement at our home track. Um, you know, A&M has it at their place. We have it at our place. Uh, that'll, you know, we'll cross that bridge down there when we come to it. But you, I, I'm impressed with how our athletes handled everything last week and um you know we're gonna do the best we can they'll do the best you can it's amazing how they can they can get themselves ready to compete at a high level you know even without the fans bob did you have another question don't get me wrong we want them but you know it's it's it is what it is right now I, I, if I can say one other thing too, you know, Eric mentioned about the, the, the pro meet and I assume there's four pro meets coming up. The first one is this Sunday, but it just gives you, it shows you the level of athlete collegiately in track and field that competes in our sport. Um, how, how close it is to the professional ranks. And, and I don't, I don't, you know, that's, that's a, you know, that's a pretty impressive thing for me. And we, I've been saying it for a long time is that, you know, the level of the level of athletes that's competing collegiately in track and field is, is, is phenomenally close to the pro ranks. You know, there's no D league in track. There's not, you don't have that. I mean, it's these, some of these athletes are competing at a pretty high level. And that's, that's a big selling point for us, you know, getting fans in and seeing, seeing our athletes, um, you know, compete and actually being nearly at that pro level for a lot, for a whole bunch of them. Uh, yeah, sure. I got a couple more. Um, okay. hey, I know they're not going to give you guys any trophies, you know, after the meet, you're not going to hand out trophies, but the fact you are scoring and you got some SEC teams, the USC, Texas, um, the fact that it's scored kind of gives your kids you know, I, I would think a little added, you know, competitive juice. Just uh, what, what, what each, if each coach could talk about that, the fact that meets scored, it is a, you know, kind of a prelude to the championship meets coming up. Go ahead, Lance. I think that, we, you know, the kids will notice it. Uh, obviously, as coaches, we're not uh, loading our events to be most effective, uh, you know, across the board as far as trying to win the meet. But if our kids rise to the challenge that the, the specific event they're entered in, um, the, the score will take care of itself. But 
it will be a different team uh, the way we as coaches distribute the, the talent that we have when it comes down to nitty gritty time, be it the SEC meet or the NCAA meet. But, you know, they'll notice it and they'll, you know, they'll definitely want to contribute uh, to help in the team itself. Yeah, just to, just to piggyback on what Lance said, kind of the same thing. You know, every every scored meet tells a story. And, and you're right, this is our second meet of the year. And I can tell you right off the bat, looking at Lance's lineup, that he's not doubling or tripling, you know, um, and, and maximizing the score. We're, we're just not at that point yet with our team. The race is coming up next week that we do anything like that. You know, um, you know, we're, we're testing some people and some other events like we get, we've got um, um, Gilbert Boyd running the mile. Okay. So he's not normally a miler, you know, he's a three K five K guy, but we're, we're, you know, putting him in the mile to, you know, to, to test where he's at and to give him an opportunity to run, you know, something fast like that. But that doesn't mean the score doesn't count that, you know, the other schools are probably doing the same thing, right? We're all kind of, we're all kind of doing the same gig and that is hey we're we're trying to prepare our team uh you know two weeks four weeks down the road for some bigger races so you're not going to see texas doubling or tripling just like arkansas is not going to do but again every uh you know every team score every meet every team score tells a story about your team and can you win with a different kind of lineup shifting your lineup around can you still win that tells you if we can't that just gives you an idea of of, hey, you know, uh, if we get fourth or fifth place, you know, we th that tells us a little bit how we match up with Texas, even though it's not a conference meet. You see what I'm saying? And so uh, I, we glean something out of out of a scored meet. I think that I think all of our meets should be scored. Um, you know, that puts restrictions on some other unattached athletes and pacers and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's that's imp almost impossible to do. But for this year, where there's no one attached and what have you, hey, we're scoring, you know, we're, we're scoring to meet. And I think at the end of the day, that's what the media wants. They want to know where we stand on that, on this particular Saturday. And that's where we have to be like other sports. And, and that's, that's where our fan base grows, I think. So I'm glad we're scoring it. We're going to keep doing it. And, Lance will come away with a with uh, a, a picture of where he's at, and I'll come up away with mine, and and um, you know we'll um, you know and we'll match up, and somebody's going to win, and somebody's not, and I'm I'm okay with that, no matter what lineup I put in. So, sorry for the long answer, but that's how we. Right, I have to get to work out, otherwise we won't have a team on Friday. So, thank you guys very much. Okay, thanks, thanks Lance.